and I didn't know what to do. Did I call them? Did I tell them that I had erased Grandpa's last musical efforts? <laughs> So in my very early days of recording, everything was analog, and we recorded to two-inch analog tape. And two-inch analog tape had 24 tracks. Track 24 was Simpty time code. Usually track 23 was a click track if you needed that. So you're very limited on your real estate, and everything that went to tape was important. Every inch of that tape that you used had to really mean something. The track sheet was the way we kept up with everything that was on that tape. It wasn't like digital day where you named the tracks. You had a physical piece of paper that you would write kick, background vocal, lead vocal. Whatever was on that tape, on that track for that song, you had to write down. And it was important that the track sheet be kept up with. Without that, you could really get yourself in trouble. I happened to be working on this one project from a small gospel group from Texas. And they had come into the studio and we had laid the basic music tracks, cut their vocals. And on the very last day, they said, hey, we want our grandfather to play a banjo solo on this song. So we queued the tape back up and you had to pull the track sheet, locate to that, load the tape machine. It was a whole process back then. It wasn't a double click of a mouse. Queued up that song, went to that break, and we put their grandfather who had traveled with them in the recording booth, mic'd him up, and let him play his banjo solo. We packed up, and they went on their way. I was scheduled to complete that album in about a month or so, so I had other projects to work on. And I did have to go in and overdub, final instrumentation, a lot of colors and flavors. I, in fact, we hired David Johnson for that. And he came in, a well-known session musician and phenomenal. We worked through the whole album in a day. I pulled up the master two-inch reels and began mixing the album the following week. And I got to the song with Grandpa's banjo solo, and I couldn't find it. Checked every track, looked at my track sheet. It wasn't on my track sheet. I really looked close at that track sheet. I hadn't written it down and it dawned on me. In the mad rush to get Grandpa Solo on last minute, I didn't write it on the track sheet. And it was track 22, I remember it to this day. Steel guitar. I had overdubbed a steel guitar and erased Grandpa's solo. I was devastated embarrassed. I didn't know what to do. So I went in the office and talked to the studio manager and said, this is what I've done. I've erased Grandpa Solo. And I thought, man, I'm going to have to fly him back in or something. This is, this is going to be on me. It's going to be an expensive fix. So what was already a bad situation just got much worse. When the studio manager proceeded to tell me that Grandpa had passed on a few weeks earlier. And I didn't know what to do. Did I call them? Did I tell them that I had erased Grandpa's last musical efforts? Or did I try to recreate it? Well, I opted for the latter. And back then, we would run our mixes to cassette tape as a client reference. These Nakamichi MR1 tape machines, built like tanks, awesome machines. We'd print our mixes to cassette as a reference for the client. And I had made myself a copy of that as well, just to check tracking and see what overdubs were needed. And that's the only reference I had of Grandpa's solo. So I brought a session musician and a banjo player and played him the cassette tape and said, I need you to recreate this exactly. So after several hours and me saying, nope, too good, do it again. Nope, make it worse. Nope, not right. 
and we referenced that cassette back and forth, back and forth. We overdubbed this banjo and I got it what I felt was close enough. So I printed the mix and sent the reference to the client. I didn't hear another word about it. Thank God. So the moral to that story is, always make sure you keep good notes and there is no undo button on a tape machine.